Hello friends, welcome back to module five, lesson number one, creating a culture to attract the best talent. In this lesson, you're gonna learn how to create a great culture so then that way you can have staff that take care of your business like their own. To start off, we need to define what culture is. Culture is how people interact with each another and how they interact with your customers. This is all through a shared set of beliefs, a shared set of values, attitudes, purposes, and behaviors. This would show up in your work environment, shows up in your vision, mission, in the values and the goals that you have for your staff. Now, what is a great culture and what makes for a great culture? A great culture is when your stated culture, what your poster boards are saying, what basically you're saying on your website, and what people really actually do is aligned. When those two things are aligned, that's when you have a great culture. For example, if customer service orientated is part of your company's values, that's the stated culture, and is aligned with how your front of the house treats your customers. And basically they have a lot of attention to detail. They make sure that they serve them to the best of their capability, that's what makes for a great culture is when those two things aligned. Where can you see company culture? On your own website, where it displays the values, mission on Glassdoor, for, for example, testimonials from staff and ex-employees, you would see great cultures and not just great, but company cultures through Yelp, when people are commending on um, the staff being super nice, super happy and super friendly, or vice versa, when you see negative reviews on Yelp um, or Google reviews, when they say that their customer service is poor, places dirty, it's not professional. And when you go on that restaurant's website, when they say that they focus on cleanliness, they focus on professionalism, they focus on customers, that's a huge disconnect with what people are experiencing and what they preach that they, they, they are doing. Um, you can also see your company, uh, the company's culture in person at the shop and how they interact with each other and how you experience and how you feel when you're in a place. A lot of times it's not what people say, but it's how you feel. So definitely be in there to actually understand how that feels. And remember one thing, your employees drive your business, not your customers. So make sure that you understand that. This is through basically multiple interviews with really successful restauranteurs. And I asked them, what is their greatest asset? What is it that makes their restaurant so popular and so successful? 10 out of 10, they say it is their team. It is, they say it's because they invested in their team because their team is an extension of what they believe in, is an extension of how they want to serve their customers. And in return, their customers feel and accept how the, how the employees treat them. So if you don't treat your employees well, if you don't treat them as an asset and you just really focus on your customers while neglecting your on your employees, then there's no one to help you do that unless you're the only one that serves and faces your customers, which at the end of the day, we all know that's not possible. So you might be asking, hey, Wilson, I get con culture. I get the fact that I want to create a great culture, but why is it essential for having great staff? It is because your employees are much happier if you put the great, if you, if they're aligned with your culture, they feel less stressed. And you also, on the other hand, feel less stressed. They're much more optimistic about their career career because they're working in line and in flow with what they believe in. For example, if your values and your employees' values don't align, it is okay. That means it's just not the right fit. Just like how you're not gonna be the right fit for all the other people out there, it's the same example. It becomes much more of a collaborative working environment as well much more engaged with work when they feel that, hey, you know what, these are the values that I believe in, this is how I work, and hey, it just so happens that my boss has the same values, great, I'm just being myself, and that's how they can feel much more engaged with work. They're much more productive, they have much more ownership and accountability, and at the end of the day, they truly care because it feels like they're, it, this is their own business. And this is one of the biggest thing that I always that get asked is, hey, Wilson, how do you create a culture and that 
actually has staff that cares because at the end of the day it's really really difficult um and people always complain about their staff don't care their staff is just they have no common sense so on and so forth always always criticizing about their staff and this is something that i hear all the time but when you have a great culture when you onboard people with the same values then working with your staff is so easy it becomes an effortless experience because they just have that type of ownership and accountability which you cannot force upon them which you cannot add an extra few dollars for them it comes from inner self okay it leads and all of this when your your employees are happy all leads to happier customer which in turn allows them to come back again and again which in turn allows you to have the better reviews and everything just goes into this positive cycle of goodness so stated culture equals actual culture makes for a great culture guys this culture is the foundation of every single organization. Believe it or not, even if you if you don't have a stated culture, your your team would still feel there is a certain type of way working with you. So if you don't define it, if you're not purposeful and intentful with this, then it becomes a very very um, bad experience for your staffs. So first off, how do you create? your culture, knowing the importance of it, knowing why you need to do it, how do you create it? First, we need to understand it's how people interact with each other. That's what culture is. And this is all through a shared set of beliefs. And what does that mean? That means you must first define your values to act as a guideline of how people interact and behave with each other. You need to start identifying what is it and how is it that you like things done. And then you can actually teach and onboard people with the same shared set of beliefs. So, for example, if my values are about empowerment, then I need to understand that and have clarity within myself. So then that way I can onboard people who see the same values, who understands the importance of empowerment, who believes in that as well. And then that way we can onboard them and it becomes a really, really good mix. And that's the reason why your focus in module one was on values and on mission and on your whys, because that is the foundation of any types of business. And now you get to use that. So the stated culture is the values, your mission statement, your why, your vision, all these are your stated culture. What are you going to do with these stated cultures that you created in module one and module two? You print these, you incorporate it into your website, your restaurant, your training manuals, and anywhere else that you see fit. It could be simply as a throughout every single conversation, you bring this up, what is the values? And you define that and it becomes an exercise for all your meetings. Actual culture, understand and always remind yourself that these are the rules and framework in everything you do. So whenever you're having marketing meetings, when you're having like a team huddle, this is what you emphasize on. It's okay to keep bringing these values up, these mission, these behaviors, and the vision that you want to create because people need constant reminder and the more you say it the more it becomes real and you need to lead by this and try your very best to align both what you state and how you live it always make sure that you put your money where your mouth is always try to preach what do what you preach okay because the closer the stated culture what you have on paper what you have on your uh, wall what you have on your business plan those are your stated culture the closer it is with actually what you do the stronger your culture is there's no right or wrong answer but there is something called a great culture and that's when this these two things aligned Two common pitfalls that I see when people are trying to execute culture. The first is misalignment, not being authentic. Misalignment with stated culture and actual culture because it, the idea and the sound of customer service might be very uh, cliche and it might be something that everyone talks about, which is the reason why you feel like that. Hey, you know what? If I'm running a restaurant, I need to run uh, and have customer service as one of my core values. But in turn, when you don't truly believe in that, that's not authentic because you won't act on that. You won't 
spend the money to invest with your team so then that way they have better customer service. And when that is misaligned, it shows up with how your customers feel it and how your employees are able to deliver that. So for example, company can have posters about quality and care, but if the owner is abusive, is condescending and treats their employees terribly and promote incompetent people, this is misalignment and we don't wanna do that. Understand yourself really, really well and own up and have accountability to your own values and don't be afraid to embrace that because no other business is the same. The only difference that sets them apart is the values and how the founders work. And this is what makes for a great culture, not necessarily the individual values that sounds great. Very common in many places. You've got to be genuine, desire to create an actual positive culture as you stated, okay? So once again, be authentic and own what you truly believe in. Don't just go for values that sounds great. Second up, Culture is not a one-time thing. This is an ongoing and always require intentional nurture and the way you live it. Understand this is a forever commitment. Whenever you've stated your culture, whatever you've stated for your values and the way you do things, this becomes an ongoing thing for the duration of your whole business. It's not a one-time thing where you set it and you forget it. And this is what we see as a big common pitfall with a lot of companies that started off with a great culture, but they ended off fading away with these cultures as they grow and as they don't pay attention to it anymore. And we see this in a lot of founder stories, right? Because they focus on the lack of effort in maintaining the actual culture. So we see this as being a very, very um, big thing where when the business is growing, we don't pay much attention to the culture anymore. And that is a big no-no. We see that Lululemon does an amazing job with this because they actually have a department focused specifically on creating and bridging the gap of culture and always living and breathing by that. Now it is your turn to go and create your company culture. Define your values by completing the seven steps in the link below. And if you haven't already done so, defining your why, your mission statement in module one, make sure you guys go back, define those because you're gonna be able to use this to create your own very set of culture. In this lesson, you've learned how to create a great culture that attracts the best talent who cares for your business. If you want your business to run automatically while you have the freedom of time and freedom of financial to go and travel and take care of and spend quality times with your loved ones, then having the great culture set down in stone is super important. So make sure you guys download in the link below and start working on that. Next up, we're gonna be talking about how do you hire your all-star team who will run your dream restaurant for you. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.